Welcome to another bonus episode of The Dark Parade. My name is Bo, and I'm a found footage fool. Tell me the camera thing isn't annoying. Yeah, it's annoying. Hey everyone, welcome back to another found footage fool. Uh, we have been uh, in a real up and down kind of situation here of late, and... Uh, let's <laughs> find a happy medium, perhaps, with this new episode. Uh, we're, we're talking about a movie called Exhibit A. And to give you a, a little bit of background on Exhibit A, it is uh, written and directed by a guy named Dom Rotherow, who uh, directed this along with some short movies and a movie called My Brother Tom. Uh, which seems to be kind of a, a crime story of, of some type. And it premiered in 2010, so it's, uh, you know, not an old found footage movie, but but certainly uh, not a, a brand new film. And the premise of this movie is that uh, you have a, a young girl uh, by the, the name of Judith, who is a, a, a daughter in the, the King family. And she has a, a brother named Joe. Uh, her father is Andy. Her mother is Sheila. And the movie is largely about uh, this slow disintegration of the family as particularly the father, Andy. Uh, you see him go through a, a, a series of failings where they're going to buy this house by the sea and unfortunately uh the you know that's all kind of contingent on him getting this promotion which he doesn't get and he's feeling you know kind of emasculated and it feels a, a bit like a failure as a result of this and this leads to increasingly uh unhinged acts from andy as he kind of desperately tries to regain in theory the respect of his family and um, but a lot of this is self-imposed, right? Like a, a lot of the movie is sort of about how men, um, are presumed to be the breadwinners and the head of the family. And if they are not that, then they get a little cuckoo, I think is the scientific term. And, uh, that's all, uh, seen through the eyes of, uh, Judith, who is filming all of this on a, on a camera, um, uh, shout out to both uh, Brittany Ashworth, who plays the, the daughter Judith, and also Bradley Cole, who uh, doesn't have a, a giant career, has done parts here and there since the late 80s, uh, but the last time he appeared in anything was, uh, you know, about 10 years ago. And uh, But he plays the, the father, Andy, and, and I think he's pretty good. You know, he has a real kind of desperate insanity to him that I, I really liked. Um, so that is the, the premise of Exhibit A, that we're, we're basically seeing all of this unfold through the eyes of the camera as this family starts to fall apart. If you're new to the show, this is not just a, a standard review show. This is not some subjective look at whether or not the movie is any good. We have a set of five criteria to judge this particular found footage movie on and uh, let us uh, waste no more time let's get right to it um, the first criteria we use to judge the effectiveness and the quality of a found footage film is uh, whether or not it makes sense to keep the camera on and in this case I would say very much so this is uh, very much a, uh, a movie about uh, keeping the the camera on and you know it, it it's Judith, you know, kind of capturing the story of her family. And then later, uh, the father, Andy, gets hold of the camera and he begins to sort of document what he sees as being the, the cancer eating away at his family. And the title of the movie uh, obviously comes from the fact that this video that has been recorded by Judith and her father is uh, Exhibit A in, uh, in the case being assembled. So, yeah, it makes perfect sense for keeping the camera on. Uh, no, no problems there. I don't, I don't, there was never a point in the movie where I felt like the movie was having to strain credulity uh, in order to, to keep 
the focus where it ought to be. And then we come to characters. Is the movie... Are the characters in the movie likable? Are they are they interesting? Are they worth following? And this is another case where the movie does a really good job of, uh, you know, presenting characters that, if not likable, because I don't know that a character beyond Judith is especially likable, but they are interesting. And especially, again, Bradley Cole's father character, Andy, is very interesting because you are presented with a very complicated kind of guy. He, you know, is devoted to his family, but that devotion and what he perceives to be his role in the family uh, begins to pervert his feelings about how he should go about providing for the family. Um, You see him grow increasingly uh, erratic and engage in behaviors that are you know, sometimes violent, sometimes just, uh, you know, a a little mad, uh, in the improper British term of mad. Um, so yeah, like I would say the mother character, uh, Sheila as played by Angela Forrest gets a little bit of a short shrift. I don't know that she plays as big a role as, um, you might like, or, or, or certainly to give a little more, uh, background into the relationship between her and her husband. Um, Oliver Lee, who plays uh, Joe, the brother, is suitably kind of weird and creepy. I mean, he's a teenage boy and is into weird shit. Um, you know, there's a, a whole scene where Andy breaks into his son's room to find all these pictures of a neighbor girl and also a video of him. Uh, you know, having sex with uh, a, a, a girl in, you know, the parents' bedroom. And this is just more fuel to the fire that Andy believes, like, oh, my family is falling apart and I've got to, I've, you know, I've got to bring them all back together. Um, there's a, a great moment where Andy, uh, once they realize, like, oh, we're not going to get this nice house by the beach... Um, he decides, well, I'm just going to build a swimming pool in the backyard. And when, uh, the actual, you know, like renting the backhoe to actually dig the hole fails, he just digs it with a shovel and kind of lines it with a plastic liner himself. And it looks real low rent, but, um, you know, it's him sort of asserting this, uh, his will upon, um, his home. And in a lot of ways, the movie is about that, of him trying to make his family perfect, even though it's not. And and to, you know, by, by sheer uh, will, um, make things in the image as he sees it. And uh, how that can go horribly, horribly wrong. And so the characters... Uh, generally very good and and kind of interesting. Like Judith has, uh, it, it's very clear from early goings that she's gay and has a crush on her neighbor and her father kind of finds that out as well, but he's supportive in the worst possible way. And yeah, it's it, all of that is surprisingly interesting. And uh, so for a movie that's, you know, 90 minutes long, it does a good job of you know, presenting characters that you want to follow along with and, and are interested in, you know, the, the lives that they are leading. And that brings us to our third category, which is authenticity. Does this feel like a real thing? And absolutely it does. This this feels like a movie, not to say it's ripped from the headlines or anything, but it, it feels like a thing that could happen. Uh, these are all characters that feel like they, they could be people you know, um, that it's a situation ultimately when things turn violent. Um, it is not, there is nothing supernatural about this movie. There is nothing, you know, demonic. It's not as though the house is haunted and that's what's affecting, um, Andy. It's just that he's a, a guy trying to provide for his family. And as you know, the things go south with his career and, you know, with the home that he wants to provide for his family and, with the members of his family themselves, that they're getting older and becoming distant, that all of those things contribute to make him monstrous. And he never, it's very clear in the movie, he never sees himself as the monster. 
and and that's another thing that I think is important for a movie like this to show that you know the person who is kind of losing their nut um, doesn't see that he does not see that he has gone crazy he is just trying to make his family happy and in making his family happy he's doing some terrible terrible things and so then we get to watchability which is just a, like is all of this entertaining is it a movie that hangs together well um and even though it's a 90 minute movie there are times where you feel like you're spinning the wheels a little bit with this film um but not so much that i found it dull there were just moments where it's like okay i get it i understand what we're trying to establish here but let, let's you know k kick it into uh fourth or fifth gear here but i do like you know andy as a character and you sort of know because the movie begins with like, hey, this is evidence of a crime. You know that this is all not going to end well. And so it, it's fun to see that build as, you know, the knowledge that, oh, this is all going to go horribly, horribly wrong um, starts to unfold. And I, I found it to be a very watchable movie and, uh, and a very entertaining movie. Um, I would say the big crime that the the movie commits is that because you do know where all this is headed there isn't much surprise and when you get to the conclusion and and the you know big moment of chaos happens it most of it happens kind of off camera and it's not without impact but it feels like it could have been far more impactful if you saw a little bit more of it and that sounds a little uh, uh voyeuristic that oh i really want to see you know the violence as it happens um and you you get a little bit of that but i don't know it for all of the build-up it it feels a little anticlimactic but it's not bad it, it's just not as satisfying as I would kind of want. I, I sort of wanted uh, the pool to play a larger part or something. And, um, you know, there's sort of a revelation at, a, 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 at one point of the film that Andy may have killed somebody else and, um, or, or certainly uh, got them out of the picture. And, I, you know, that's the kind of stuff that I, I wish we saw a little more of in this movie. Uh, but it's still interesting. It just diminishes the impact a, a little bit that most of the horrific stuff, um, happens when the camera's not looking. Um, but it, th that doesn't sink the movie or anything. Um, but let's get, let's get to our fifth and final category here, which is scares. Is, is the movie scary? And the movie is not really a frightening film. Um, it is not scary in the way that like a paranormal activity is or even a, a you know capture kill release which I may do uh, the next time because uh, this movie reminds me of that in some ways in the sense that you're dealing with somebody who is clearly you know losing their mind and getting violent that movie does it in a much more direct kind of way but this movie um, does traffic in, in some of those themes and I, it, no, it's not scary. It, it's interesting. It, it's a, uh, if you're a found footage movie fan and you've never seen exhibit a, I would recommend it. Um, it, it's, it, it's just a little sterile, I think is the problem. It's not frightening. It feels very much like you were watching a thing. You were, you feel some, you know, one of the things about found footage movies is that it puts you directly in the middle of all the, the carnage and, 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 uh, the action and forces you to be, you know, uh, as a viewer, a bit of a participant in the goings on. And this movie just always feels a little at arm's length and as a result doesn't have the same impact that you know, something like a paranormal activity or, uh, like wreck or, you know, one of the greats that sort of puts you behind the lens of the camera and, and makes you feel a much more visceral, uh, reaction to the happenings of the movie. This feels like a thing that is playing out, 
before you, but it, you are not a participant the way that you are in a lot of found footage movies and, and in some of the best found footage movies. So I, at the end of the day, you know, if I were, if I'm grading this movie, I'm probably coming in around a three out of five, which feels a little low for all the things I've said about it, but it's really hinges on how good the cast is and how, you know, good the premise is. But by the end of the movie, I don't think the execution of the finale was great. Uh, and I don't know that I was left feeling, you know, terribly satisfied as a viewer that I'd seen something that was a movie that is going to linger with me. It's a movie I enjoyed during the watch. And the more that I've thought about it since, the more I felt like I wish it had been better. And it, that's not to say it's bad. Like I said, if, if you are a found footage movie fan and you like uh, a found footage movie that is a little more realistic, a little less, uh, you know, supernatural. There's no monsters. There no, there's no ghosts or demons or anything like that. It's just a family kind of coming apart at the seams. And I think there is a place for that. And I think that this movie is real close to getting that totally right. And I, again, Bradley Cole as Andy King, I think is very, very good. And I really enjoyed watching this. At any rate, that is it for this go round of uh, Found Footage Fool. Uh, we have a bunch more stuff coming up uh, very soon. In fact, if you are uh, listening to this both either on the, uh, the Patreon um, or uh, on the regular Friday release coming up very soon. You are going to have uh, things like a Sinister Sunday happening on uh, this Sunday. Um, there's going to be the uh, the next episode on My Bloody Valentine in the, the main series coming up next week, as well as a What You Watching with uh, Jamie and Bo. So... Lots of stuff coming up here on the Dark Parade. Uh, thank you, as always, for joining uh, me on these uh, explorations of found footage movies. And as always, thank you for joining the Dark Parade. We'll see you next time.